Hello. I'd like to now introduce you to the Bastrol 2. This is also called the BT2. This is a very popular batcher, particularly with the food and chemical industry. It features eight large digits of LED displays that can be viewed from a distance away. The Batch Troll 2 supports two-stage batching if desired. This permits you to have a fast fill followed by a slow fill at the end of the batch, enabling more accurate batch quantities. There are two control relays to accomplish this. The keypads are organized as your basic batching controls as well as a telephone style numeric keypad to enable easy batch quantities to be entered. These large rubber buttons are favored when wearing gloves. The Batch Troll 2 has a number of ordering options for the input cards that must be selected based on the signal you have coming from your flow meter. There are a variety of pulse input card settings that you can order as well as an analog input card for use with 4 to 20 linear flow meters and another one for analog inputs from square law flow meters. There is a scaled pulse output as standard on this model. Analog outputs, communication cards are optional features that must be ordered separately. You'll notice that one of the buttons on this instrument is labeled rate totalizer. To change between the selections, you're going to be pressing the button and it will alternate between displaying rate indicated by the R in the far left hand side and the display of total which has no indications. Pressing the enter button allows you to view a grand total. This sometimes is used for inventory amounts and you'll notice the display flashes while displaying this parameter. The other buttons are labeled stop, start, and clear that are used with batch amounts. Let's look at the basic operation of the batcher. You may want to follow along in your user manual where it describes the operation. But we're going to attempt to just show a basic batching sequence. To enter a batch quantity, you press the menu one button and you'll see a menu message followed by a prompt for the preset. This is where the batch quantity is entered. To enter a quantity, press enter. You'll now see a prompt prompting you for the preset amount or batch quantity that's needed and you'll see the quantity that was last used in the batch. To change this, you can press clear and enter your new quantity. Clear, number, and then enter will store that quantity for you. To get the batcher ready in the standard batching mode for a new batch, you begin by pressing clear. This configures the batcher to be ready to start with the new batch quantity. Next, you can press the start button. You'll see a started message indicating that the relays have uh, energized. Normally, if you had a signal present, the batch would begin counting. If you wish to prematurely terminate a batch, you can press stop. Again, you'll see a stopped message. To configure the unit further requires unlocking the instrument and going into the setup menus. I've pre-configured this instrument to accept a password of 1000. So with the batch stopped, you can enter the 1000 and you'll notice the unit will toggle between lock on and lock off. With the lock off, it's telling you that the instrument is unlocked. This model provides two power supplies 
that can be used to power your flow meter. There's one that's plus 12 volts available on terminals 13 and 12 and another isolated 12 volts on terminals 16 and 15. These two power supplies can be wired together to provide plus 24 volts commonly required for some flow meters. Prior to discussing the programming of the instrument, it's important to review the calibration constants for flow meters. Pulse producing flow meters are described by a K factor. In this example, the flow meter manufacturer's calibration sheet or tag on the flow meter or stamping on the flow meter indicates that the flow meter produces 100 pulses per gallon. This is important to understand that this could also be represented as saying 10 pulses per one-tenth gallon or one pulse per one-hundredth gallon. Since the calibration factor entered for the totalizer on the batch troll 2 is entered in terms of the least significant digit and depends on the number of decimal points shown for the total. In our example, we're going to use 100 pulses per gallon on a 2-inch flow meter, and we're going to be displaying in whole gallons. So the parameter of interest for us will be using this 100 pulses per gallon. The flow chart for programming the Batch Troll 2 is shown on page 10 of the user manual. Follow along in your user manual as we go through the basic configuration. After you've unlocked the instrument and you press menu, the unit will be going through each of the major menu groups. The first preset we've already described. The next menu is pre-worn. This is the amount before the final batch quantity is reached that the flow will be slowed down from the fast fill to the slow fill. To change this number, begin by pressing enter. You will note that the unit currently will slow down five gallons before the end of the batch quantity. To change that number, press clear the desired number and then hit enter. Let's change it to ten gallons. Clear one, zero, enter. The unit is now set up to slow down the batch quantity or the batch fill cycle 10 gallons before the final preset. We're going to use the view key or C key to display the rate so we can see more clearly when the unit's returning to the run mode. Let's go into the next menu. The pre-type is a menu grouping where you can set do you want the unit to start at zero and count up to the batch quantity or start at the batch quantity and count down. Press enter to, to begin this sequence. You will notice the unit is currently set up for the standard preset. You can change to a faster sequence called easy preset by pressing the D key. We're going to leave it in the standard preset. You'll notice the unit is now returned to the run mode. We're going to now move to the next menu. This is the count menu. Pressing enter begins this menu group. You'll notice the time K factor message had appeared followed by the number of its current setting. The 200 corresponds to 200 pulses per gallon. We're going to change this to 100. Clear, 100, enter. The K factor has now been set to 100 to correspond to our application. 
the R0 SP determines whether the unit is going to be counting up or down. R0 begins a batch at a quantity of zero and counts up. SP, when selected, begins at the batch quantity and counts down. We're going to use the count up mode. The next menu allows you to set the decimal location for the totalizer. In our case, we want it to be in whole gallons, and that's what we have here. Continuing to the next menu is where the rate K factor would be entered. Again, there's a location for a K factor. There's an equation in the user manual that shows how to arrive at the K factor depending on the rate units you wish to show in. The window, the significant figures, the weight or averaging features are other parameters associated with the rate display. See your user manual for more details. Let's go to the next menu. In the lockout menu is one important function called security. In the event of a loss of a signal from the flow meter during a filling operation for more than the program number of seconds will cause the batch to terminate. This is a safety feature. Also in this menu is where you define your password code. Here you can see the password is currently set to 1000. Let's proceed to the next menu. The out card setting contains the settings for the communication card. Within this menu is the unit ID, a selection where either a serial or parallel port can be selected. Serial is the only option offered with this model, followed by some communication settings. The board rate, currently shown here, set to 9600, and the parity, currently shown, set to odd. Let's proceed to the next menu. The analog output abbreviated as ALG out, is the next menu group. Here, you can see you can set the analog output to either follow the rate or by selecting the CT, it's following the count total. We're going to leave it set to rate. We can now set the span where the set low or formerly endpoint might be set to zero and the set high might be set to 200 gallons a minute, corresponding to our 2-inch meter. There's one final menu associated with the pulse output, and we're going to go to that one now. The output frequency corresponds to the maximum rate that the pulse output that is retransmitted by the batch troll 2 will be used. There are selections for a high speed of 20,000 as well as several lower speed selections. The lowest speed selection of 10 is compatible with most PLC digital I.O. cards. Choosing 20,000 as your default if it's not being used is a good selection. This completes the basic setup of the Batch Troll 2, and the only remaining item is to lock users out by pressing 1000 when at the home running display. At this point, the user is blocked from all menus except changing the preset. The Batch Troll 2 finds widespread applications in chemical and food industries or wherever gloves are used. 
It is commonly applied in indoor and is available in a variety of wall mount, panel mount, and explosion proof enclosures. Thank you for considering the Batch Troll 2 for your next batching application. For further assistance, contact our factory or visit www.kep.com.